and welcome to a special edition of B News In Depth. I'm your host, Rich Hosford. Our topic tonight is the operations of BCAT over the last year during the pandemic. My first guest to join me is production coordinator Chris Flaherty. Chris, thanks for taking some time and joining me here today. Oh, thank you for having me, Rich. So I understand that there's a kind of a unique story that happened last year that you wanted to share with the community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it all started mid-July when we were preparing for last year's annual meeting, which, as you know, was virtual due to the pandemic. It was a quiet day in the office, and I was gathering clips for the year in review montage. B News Sports Hub. I'm your host, Liz Gillespie. Show the so, um, so what kind of a car we got here? A Chevy. Pull up. Hello, everyone. Hey, what you doing? Oh, just going through everything from last year. I, I, I'm making the montage for annual meeting. Oh uh, yeah, probably a lot to go through. Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, obviously things took a hit with the pandemic, so. I wish we can go back in time and prevent the virus from happening. It's a nice thought, Robert, but no matter what literature or highest grossing film of all time tells us, time travel is just not possible. Yeah, it's not. I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. I'm sure we're fine. But we weren't fine. A lot of people here without masks on. I think I'm seeing double. Hello, everyone. Uh, Good job with the umbrella. That's me and Linda in the Fourth of July parade last year. How is that possible? You don't suppose that we went back in time, do you? I mean, I'm not sure how that's. I think we're in the TV where all the clips are. Then how do we get out? So you and John were actually stuck inside the television. That's what I believe it to be. It was sort of like literal channel surfing. And while that was happening, what was Robert doing? Well, naturally, I think he was just trying to figure out a way to get us back. Uh, my understanding is he did have a little bit of help, though. disappeared and now I can't get the TV to turn back on because I think they're stuck in it. Well, let's just unplug the TV and uh, turn it back on again. Huh, Robert? Huh? Alright, let's give it a shot. <sighs> At any rate, the gentleman hey, we're back. No, we're not. I remember when this episode of Burlington would be on tape. 39 31 years? 31. 31 years with the Burlington Board of Health. All right, let's try again. Donated his... It's freezing out here. It's because we're at the tree lighting. Oh. And, uh, and what's your favorite part of Christmas? Let's go. It's like frozen too out here. Okay, now are we back? Nope. This is taping B News Sports Hub. I'm gonna win first before you, I, I complain about people not being here. We've started to win. Uh, this year we've won, and it's just <laughs> going down. Okay, so when are we? I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> cops and cars. We're at Cops and Cars, June 2019. This is hopeless, and, and frankly. A grim reminder of just how much has changed these past few months. Yeah, I have to agree, but you know, it hasn't been all bad. Here, let me see the report. What are you gonna do? Well, I'm going to do the old fashioned switching the battery trick. I was. Okay. Bear with me. Hey, 
Remember when all the elementary school teachers put together a car parade for their students? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And look, Veteran Services still put together a Memorial Day ceremony this year. And we were still able to have a graduation ceremony for the high school seniors at VHS. Let's continue to persevere and do just as we have done for so many years. Thank you. We were out here for town meeting too. And now we were. Put this to a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? So you see, things aren't the way we want them to be right now. But we've been pulling through, you know. We've been creating and making memories in different ways. You're right, John. Creativity goes on. You stole that from an Apple no, TV I didn't. promo, didn't you? No, I yes, did not. You, did. you no. totally did. It was all me. Come on, John. Let's go home. You know, Robert, I have an idea, and it just might work. What if we were to put the TV in a bag of rice, and we put the bag of rice in the freezer, and then we let it sit for, let's say, two hours. Now, how does that sound? How are we? All right, you get the TV down, I'm gonna get the bag of rice. Sounds like a plan. We uh, did the old trick where you swap the batteries and the remote. Why didn't we think of that? Well, that's gonna save me a lot of money on rice. What? Well, I have to say, that is quite a story. Well, yeah, no, it was definitely a harrowing experience, but I think it was a nice reminder of how much we've done and how much we continue to do together as a community here at BCAT. Absolutely, and I have to ask though, um, after being struck by lightning and restructured on a molecular level inside of a television, I mean, do you have any lingering side effects? Well, sometimes I hear coded messages in the back of my head and they're in languages I definitely don't understand. And every now and then I see John's eyes start to glow green and he just sort of freezes and stares blankly into the void. But I'd say the biggest side effect is a renewed spirit and motivation to continue to create and connect in these coming months. Yeah, and now that you mention it, I have noticed that John Green thing. It's a little weird. I'm really concerned. Yeah, you should probably get that looked at. Yeah. But since then, what else has happened here at VCAT? Well, let's find out. Linda, take it away. Um, Chris, Linda's not here. It's just the Rich, two of us. Rich, that's the, that's the bit. Fade to black. Good evening, everybody. My name is Linda McNamee, and as the president of the BCAT Board of Directors, I would like to call our annual meeting and appreciation night to order. Ooh, sorry. That was a little too loud. Thank you all for coming. Um, it's wonderful to see everyone in person after a long year and a half of isolation and uncertainty. It is nice to see life returning to normal and I'm so thankful that we are able to gather together again, not to mention right here at BHS. BCAT has always been right at home here at the high school, and we thank the Burlington Public Schools for the continued support and partnership. Just a little note, this is our first time in the auditorium doing this production, so please, if we have any technical difficulties, with a thunderstorm outside as well, please be patient. Thank you. So that leads me into my next statement. This year's ceremony is going to be a little different. However, I would like to start with our, traditional, uh, with our tradition of introducing our board of directors. We have Gretchen Carey, our vice president. You can stand up and wave or whatever, okay. Roger Riggs, our treasurer. Phil Gallagher, Colleen Moore, 
Bob Krieg. There he is. Ernie Cavino. And our newest members, Steve Morin. And Mike Espejo, our alternate member. See, you guys just got your exercise for the evening. Steve and Mike both joined the board last year during the pandemic. And this is our first full in-person meeting since February of 2020. So I would like to welcome Steve and Mike. Brad Bond, our current member and former president and treasurer, regrets not being able to join us this evening, but he is with us in spirit. I'd also like to acknowledge the work of Janet Zahara, our recording secretary, Brian Curtin, who took over our bookkeeping duties, and a special thanks to Ben Marino, who has helped keep BCAT clean and sanitized during the pandemic. Thank you all for your continued service. While we were closed for a period during the full lockdown, our services never waned, as you'll hear about it in further detail this evening. We were able to accomplish several technological updates at BCAT during this time. We had two major upgrades that improved our workflow. We upgraded our database from the Facile software to Isaac, an innovative cloud-based data management tool designed specifically for television studios and production companies. It was quoted, so I had to read it like that. We've installed Edit Share Connect, a network-based hard drive system that now houses all of our editing pro projects and production elements. This system has replaced our collection of external hard drives and has made post-production much smoother and simpler for staff and volunteers alike. Our most notable upgrade was the design and launch of our brand new website, where access to our news coverage, live streams, and video library has never been easier. Thank you to Cider House Media for helping us design this amazing new site. If you haven't checked it out yet, head on over to bcattv.org. New website, same great address. So we are looking forward. Uh, we also have a brand new podcast room. So if you haven't checked that out, I definitely would like you to see it. And I believe Jen said that there is a video clip available on that brand new website. So you can check out the wonders of the podcast studio. So in addition to all of this work behind the scenes, there's always great work coming out of BCAT. And last year was no exception, despite the pandemic. Let's take a look back at the accomplishments of BCAT, the, the BCAT community last year. Good evening, Burlington. And oh my God, is it good to be back. Welcome to the Big Hat Podcast Demonstration. Welcome to the pod where it happens. This is new Robert. Today I'm at my home in Maine. today's um, interview, I was like, oh my gosh, BCAT. 
I'm excited to be back on BCAT. It's been a long time. I mean, just the work that uh, the folks at BCAT do for us in terms of public relations uh, is really amazing and has really been remarkable. So I wanted to thank them as well. BCAT really helped us to get through this in so many ways. People could, for example, watch graduation. You will always be remembered for persevering through this difficult year. The strength and character you have all displayed during these challenging times has been remarkable to watch. We did things this year as a group to care for one another well more than we ever did in the past. This time we took the time to make sure the other person next to us was feeling okay. I still can't get over uh, the year we've had. He went for three is short! And the ball went to Red Devils! I've won the middle sex championship! Oh man! I've got nothing other than thanking the residents for the cooperation for the last 15 months of this thing we've gone through. We knew we'd be toward the end at some point. We're getting there. We're back together. Until next time, stay safe, and we hope to see you real soon. I think I'm going to cry. Tonight, in lieu of our typical appreciation awards, we'd like to recognize the volunteers that helped keep our operations running and continued their work at BCAT throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Volunteers recognized tonight will be going home with an all new BCAT cooler. Now, you can head to the beach or barbecue in true BCAT fashion carrying all of your summer refreshments in this sleek and stylish BCAT cooler. All of your sodas and other beverages will stay iced cold in your new BCAT koozies. If you didn't pick up your koozie up on the red carpet, see our prize team and make sure to grab one before you leave tonight. Did we mention they glow in the dark? Okay, now to kick things off, I'd like to invite Ernie Cavino to the stage. Thank you, Linda. As we all dug in deep to navigate the challenges the pandemic community, uh, of, uh, challenges of the pandemic, community leaders went above and beyond in helping provide communications and guidance during such unsettled times. Let's take a look. Hi, this is Eric Conti, Superintendent of Schools, and this is a very abbreviated version of Thursday Must See TV. Just offering my weekly information session in support of the efforts of the Board of Health. Again, this is something we've never done before, trying to start up with different schedules, have students remote. Uh, there's going to be a strong push to uh, encourage voters to vote by mail, so to sort of cut down on the foot traffic at town meeting. It's tough right now to see that field empty. Uh, we should be playing lacrosse on that field. We should be having track meets right now. Um, we are taking all kinds of precautions for in-person programming um, per guidance from the state. We are going to get through this. A lot of work being done, but we all have to work together. Let's make sure we're watching out for our older adults. Thank you for doing all that you're doing to confront this COVID-19 virus. Social distancing is working and together we can fight this virus. We'd like to recognize the following who utilize BCAT as a resource to keep the community informed during the pandemic. Town Administrator Paul Sagarino, Superintendent Eric Conti and Assistant Superintendent Patrick Larkin and Parks and Recreation Director Brendan Egan all provided uh, regular updates and or worked with BCAT to provide unprecedented coverage. 
Town Clerk Amy Warfield, who worked behind the scenes with BCAT to make Burlington's first outdoor town meeting a reality, as well as brought into people's homes via BCAT broadcast. Thank you all for your hard work. Now I'd like to welcome Bob Krieg to the stage. Excuse me while I get my eyes on. <clears throat> the pandemic took a devastating hit to places of worship and their congregations. Services became virtual everywhere during the lockdown for the first time ever in our history, which made our broadcasts of these services more important than ever before. Let's take a look. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I'm Rabbi Susan Abramson coming to you from the Sanctuary of Temple Shalom Emeth. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's. What a tremendous chapter about faith. Through the summer, Jameson and I are going to be doing a Facebook Live. You'll step six feet aside to the blue box on the floor. If you're wearing a face covering, remove it. So desperately in need of a healing miracle of our character to ensure that the American spirit will persevere. I'm grateful for your patience as we continue to try things to, to make sure that we can return to some sense of normalcy while still uh, maintaining a safe environment. Do a, a week of health, happiness, and peace. Shabbat Shalom. We would now like to recognize the group of producers who made it possible for the services to, to continue to appear on BCAT. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rabbi Susan Abramson not only provided coverage of the Temple Shalom MS services, she also continued producing PSAs, fillers, and special presentations related to COVID and the temple, as well as producing a virtual episode of Spiritually Speaking. Susan was unable to attend this evening. Colleen Moore continued her production and coverage of the Heritage Park Baptist Church services. Bev Broderick, who for years has been dedicated to covering the St. Malachy services, could no longer record in person because Welcome of COVID. However, she coordinated to have BCAT download and broadcast St. Malachy's live stream for broadcast. We also want to thank Paul Hippel from Wilmington United Methodist Church and Bob Noel from the First Baptist Church of Woburn and St. Mark's Episcopal Church for bringing their services to BCAT and the Burlington community. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Phil Gallagher to the stage. I've had to put his on, I have to take mine off. BCAT has worked over the past several years to Welcome expand to and improve week. its news Welcome. coverage Hi. and to become a reliable source for information to the community. I think that's been demonstrated by our hiring of a full-time news director and the bulk of the content that you see on B News is now originally produced by him and the rest of our experienced staff members. During COVID, this service became more important than ever. The staff continued to cover unprecedented events and keep everyone up to date on the happenings in the community and in the state. Our newsletter was still published daily. B News continued to be produced weekly and our monthly news programs dug deeper into the effects of the pandemic on our community. Let's have a look. Welcome to B News Weekly. Burlington High Spring Sports are heading to the MIAA State Tournament. I'm here to share with you my posts and pictures from my own social media account. This is a pretty nice forecast. Doesn't look like we're going to be having really too much in terms of steady rain. Burlington Public Schools have announced their choice for the new Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. There has been a lot of changes with the coronavirus. We have been in continuous connection with the Board of Health in our effort to bring clear facts and solid advice from our local experts. One team is eager to get themselves out there once again after not seeing the field for a little more than a year. Come and listen to a forensic scientist on Thursday, April 15th at 7 p.m. Last summer, businesses and restaurants went were sent scrambling to make arrangements for outdoor accommodations 
in accordance with COVID-19 guidelines. Another week, another photo to highlight. On the morning of March 12th, I made the incredibly painful decision to close the Senior Center. It broke my heart, and I am so grateful I didn't know how long we would be closed. I know it's a long ways off, it's five years, but we will be celebrating the nation's 250th anniversary. Until next time, this is Chris Flaherty for B News Weekly, reminding you to stay healthy and be safe. See you soon as we outline how we're going to reopen. And that's all for your weekly sports report. I'm Liz Gillespie, back to you guys in the studio. So everyone, get out there, have a great week, and enjoy the weather. Thank you for joining us. Okay. I know it's a tough night, 100 degrees, plus tornado warnings, but if you're here, we'd like to uh, recognize many key po people who contributed important coverage and information during the pandemic. When you hear your name, please stand up, and a member of our prize team will bring you some BCAT swag. Uh, meteorologist Peter Brown continued his weekly weather reports uh, remotely, sending his voiceover reports. Is Peter here? Okay. Council on Aging Director Marge McDonald, who provided important senior news updates for Burlington senior community and was constantly reaching out to those uh, who might have been isolated during that period of time. A, long, a longtime BCAT volunteer, Julie Atwood, was the voice of our events on community calendar until more recently Gretchen Carey took that over. There's Jolie. I think we lose and load Jolie this year. Going into the adult world, I guess. <laughs> Liz Gillespie, our sports anchor, delivered weekly sports reports. Liz is here. <laughs> We're also losing Liz, who's going to California to study biomedical, engin biomedical engineering. <laughs> I can barely say it, never mind study it. Linda McNamee, who filled in on a regular basis for me in the anchor seat. Dr. Wayne Saltzman, representing. Here's Rich, by the way. Rich Hosford is our news director, if you haven't met him. Okay. He, along with the rest of the staff, are the reason why we can provide original content. People are quoting us now instead of us aggregating other people's news. Uh, Dr. Wayne Saltzman, representing the Burlington Board of Health, who provided invaluable weekly COVID-19 updates during the early days of the pandemic when we didn't know, <laughs> didn't know what it was. <laughs> Lastly, our most recent addition, Gabrielle Papili, uh, who has collaborated with B News to do a weekly social media minute, a segment for sharing pics and posts from her favorite places around Burlington. Thank you all for lending your time and talent to make B News what it is today. Now, I'd like to welcome Colleen Moore to the stage. Thank you, Phil. Uh, but before I present the following programs that I'm going to present, I would like to recognize and thank our lead anchor, Phil Gallagher. He's our... Thank you, that's, that's a great thing. Um, who continued to serve as our anchor for B News Weekly and conducted weekly interviews and town officials, with town officials and community leaders during the lockdown. Now that's the official paragraph, so I'm going to just continue just a moment. Um, there's a, a verse um, in the Bible, if you're familiar, um, it it's, uh, goes something like this, just to be instant, instant, in season, and out of season. And basically that just means you be the same you were today, every day. You can be consistent. And that's what I think Phil Gallagher does for BCAT. He is um, a constant. And during the pandemic, when things were kind of crazy and things were out of whack, that's the, the person, the face that you remember seeing all the time on our newscast and, and interviews and things like that. And he had a steady pace. So this paragraph is uh, it, the official, uh, but we do uh, appreciate the, the dedication and the instant in season and out of season, the dedication and the, the, the things that Phil brings to B News Weekly. So thank you again, Phil. Many of the programs you see on BCAT are produced by volunteer producers. During lockdown and quarantine, that process was, to say the least, hindered. 
However, many of BCAT's ever resilient producers made the best of the downtime to continue their productions and of their series, often pivoting their production to a virtual or hybrid format. And that's not always, it's not as easy as it sounds. I'm just saying because the technology, everybody knew about it, but nobody knew how to implement it and it had to be done very quickly. So within, with on-camera talent appearing both in person and via Zoom, we would like to recognize the following producers for bringing fresh new programming to the BCAT Airways given the constrictions of doing it from home. Uh, producers, uh, please come to the stage when your production is mentioned. Thank you. Our first uh, presentee is uh, Representative Ken Gordon, rapping with the rep. Rapping with the Rep took on a new purpose during the pandemic, as State Representative Ken Gordon used his show platform to keep viewers regularly updated on emergency orders from the state and what this meant at the local level. Uh, I mean, it's great to be reminded of the contributions being made locally. We can't continue to have to compete with other states. We have to be able to solve these conflicts right here and right now. The media is so important. We've seen that on a national level. We see it at a local level. And would you like to say a few words? Sure. Thank you very much, Colleen. I appreciate the, um, the support of BCAT uh, from the very beginning. And you know what we learned during the pandemic is just how important BCAT is, how important it is to our community. And as Phil said, it became the principal source of news for Burlington and, uh, and, the most, and, the, and a reliable source of news for Burlington. So I really appreciate the outlet that we had, the opportunity that we had in our office to get information out to folks, you did a, a tremendous public service and should be very proud of the role that you played during this pandemic, before the pandemic, throughout. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentee, Linda McNamee, something to talk about. As Linda McNamee approaches her 200th episode, she did not let the pandemic impact her dedication to her show. She kept to her regular recording schedule, whether virtual, hybrid, or in-person throughout the pandemic, covering topics relevant to the pandemic and times as well as other entertaining and lighter subjects. Well, we, why not talk about them now? Oh, the holidays sure. are coming up. It has to have that element of fun in order for them to to want to help. And I hope that the lessons that we've learned and the discussions that we've had will create more discussion in your home um, and with your family and friends. Linda, would you like to say a few words? When would I not like to say a few words? It's, <laughs> hey, something to talk about. Thank you, Colleen. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. Um, I remember when I first started volunteering at BCAT, probably in 2004, we had t-shirts that on the back said, bringing the community together through media. And I think the course of this past year, year and a half, really brings that into reality and reminds us what a valuable resource BCAT is to our community. So I wanna thank everyone um, for supporting BCAT, supporting our community and supporting something to talk about. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Congratulations, Linda. Our next presentee, Bob Krieg, These Old Farts. The roundtable discussions of These Old Farts shifted to Brady Bunch-style discussions, as panelists appeared virtually on Zoom. With over 170 episodes produced, not even a pandemic can slow down their lively discussions and debates. This is the first time we've gotten together since the inauguration. We can start working in a direction so that things will get better. Getting together to actually talk a little bit more about what's going on in the world. Bob, would you like to come and say a few words? Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, these old farts has always been 
the way I like to describe it, people sitting around uh, having a discussion after dinner at a party of some kind. Actually, that's exactly how it started many, many years ago. Uh, it's been a challenge trying to do it through Zoom. We've succeeded more or less, but I can't wait until we're back in the studio. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to be fun. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Our next presentee, Chris Argenio, The Open Mic. The music community took a hard hit during the pandemic when restaurants and music venues shut down, but that didn't stop Chris Argenio from using her series to showcase the talents of her fellow musicians. During the pandemic, she produced multiple at-home episodes of The Open Mic, with friends and colleagues sending in recordings of performances from the safety of their own home studio. When Cassandra climbs a mountain My hope is that over the next year or so, each month, I can bring some of those musicians into your living room. Chris, would you like to say a few words? Of course, thank you. You're welcome. Um, by day, I am a cybersecurity engineer, and um, at night, by night, I'm a starving musician. So. Um, when the pandemic hit, BCAT contacted me and said, can you get your music back on the air? And thank God, because um, doing so kind of kept me sane. And then I reached out to my musician friends and everybody was more than willing to step up and help out. And um, my Christmas special was supposed to be just a, like a one hour thing and it turned into a two hour split session because I had so many people volunteering, they wanted to be on the air. So um, thank you to BCAT, thank you to all my musician friends, and thank you. Congratulations, Chris. Okay, our last presentee is unfortunately not in, uh, in the auditorium tonight, but we will, we will recognize Sonia Rollins for Back Talk. Backtalk continued production and its dedication to serving both the community and its members, even as the chamber itself was hit hard during the pandemic. Rick Parker, the show's executive producer, and Sonia Rollins, both producer and host, remained committed to the program during such an important time. Everybody got hit hard during COVID. That was a, that was a tough climate. And, and we're happy to report that Londana's is here and well and open and looking forward to our post-COVID days. When, when you get word that everybody has to stay at home and your business relies on people going out, that's a devastating piece of news. Thank you all so much for your dedication. Now for our next category, I'd like to bring Steve Moore into the stage. Thanks, Colleen. We'd now like to recognize a select group of individuals whose creativity started flowing during these, those periods of isolation and decided to channel their energy and enthusiasm into fresh new programming for BCAT. Each of the producers started a new production over the past year. Producers, please come to the stage when your production is mentioned. Uh, the first presentee is Phil Gallagher with Topics. Phil Gallagher has been a longtime member of BCAT, and earlier this year, he brought back his series, Topics, a new take on a series he originally produced in the 1980s. Topics is a program designed for curious people, covering subjects ranging from the obvious to the obscure. I'd now like to ask Phil to say just a few words. <laughs> I've said enough over a long period of time. Now I would like to 
ask John Sachs for Uncle John's song wagon. Producer, singer, and songwriter John Sachs shares his library of original songs, both humorous and personal, in Uncle John's Song Wagon. With every episode packed with fun facts and captivating performances, it's always an entertaining ride aboard the song wagon. I'm going to try to write a song and show you how I go about it. Well, I saw a family photo of your great-grandmother wearing overalls and a hat made of straw. Well, centipedes have many legs, maybe not a hundred. They scoot about and then they eat the smaller bugs they plunder. Perhaps after COVID finally crawls away and people can get together in person, I could do a little concert for my fans of the show. Now I'd like to ask John to say a few words. Uh, when my hat is on, I'm Uncle John. Otherwise, I'm just John Sachs. I want to thank uh, Phil Gallagher for suggesting that I do the show. I uh, had sent out a thing about these little videos I was making for no particular reason, and Phil's response is, BS, that's not really you. I said, no, it really is. He said, well, do a show. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> and the last presentee is Mike Espejo, the pod where it happens. Cat's first podcast, The Pod Where It Happens, features personal stories and insights from Mike Espejo as he covers everything from current events to pop culture and sports. A natural storyteller and conversationalist, Mike keeps his listeners locked in from start to finish. We're taking this boat out of port, out to sea, and we're going to take it on a magical ride. Now I'd like to ask Mike to say a few words. Thanks, Steve. As Steve mentioned, I'm newer to BCAD and newer to podcasting, and my uh, impressions of BCAD is just, I'm, I've been so impressed with the professionalism of the people in there, with Jen and Tad and everyone. It's been, they've been so welcoming to me, and um, it's been a, a fun, short ride so far, but it's been fun so far, so hopefully we'll continue. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go very far, Mike. I'd like to welcome you back to the stage. <laughs> Thanks again, Steve. <laughs> BCAT's sports coverage has grown significantly in the past uh, recent year under the direction of our sports reporter, Robert Paris. However, last year saw a significant increase in our sports coverage as a result of the pandemic. Teaming up with BHS Athletics, BCAT was covering multiple games a week during the fall, winter, and spring, <clears throat> as well as live streaming coverage for audiences. In-person attendance was limited or not possible. It was a successful year for athletics, both in front and behind the camera, as many teams went into playoffs undefeated, and some became Middlesex League champs, including girls gymnastics, girls basketball, boys indoor track, and girls lacrosse. But the real win was extending BCAT's relationship with the Burlington High School Athletic Department, a cooperation we look forward to expanding in the years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, your Burlington Red Devils. I want you to know that what we've done is uh, we've made a great schedule. We are ready to go. Burlington High School Fall Sports are back for 2020. We all just were excited and glad for the opportunity to play football, but just being out there and practicing again was great. One of the things that's important to me is we are like family, we do stick together, we need mm -hmm. to play for each other, and that's a big piece of, I think, of, of the memories you create. They stayed level-headed this whole time, and, and honestly, that's why they were able to pull it off, because they were able to push that pressure and those emotions aside and just play basketball. Is it gonna be easy? No. Is it better than not having a season? Yes. So we all have to make kind of those sacrifices and just kind of like deal with how we're going to yeah. deal with it. This is my 34th tryout and I've never ever had a tryout like this, okay? Uh, we have to do all, we all have to do our best. The goals are a little bit different this year. Um, we're trying to keep everybody healthy and have a season. I think that I would say that probably the most challenging thing was not having everyone together. 
like they said, to celebrate the ups and downs at the meets. You know, it, it makes this season even better, yep. you know, to be, to be back out in the court. I cared about how Burlington handled the pandemic. I cared about how our kids were being treated and I wanted the safety of our kids to be the number one concern. Um, and I think every single one of our coaches rose to the challenge and far exceeded the challenge. Their willingness to do for you what they needed to do superseded everything else. And, and I appreciate that and for that I thank all of you. These videos are great. What a tough year for these kids. What a, what a year for Red Devil Sports. Community events also took on a new look as most went virtual, relying on our cameras and live streams to share those events with, community, with the community. Whether some went socially distant or completely virtual, BCAT was there to cover it all. Let's take a look. Are you ready to go, Chris? Are you ready to go, Joe Lee? You know I am. Let's go. To see everyone in one place again is very awesome. Always look on the side of life. I am thrilled that we were able to come together as a community to recognize and celebrate the achievements and outstanding work of our eighth grade students. To see you guys here today and your support, I just encourage you to, you know, keep speaking up and to support these young black students because it's not easy living in Burlington. All those in favor? So Two thirds. We appreciate you and we love you. Yes. <laughs> and we could not do what we do without you. Thank you so much. This obviously looks quite different from years past. The nature of this Memorial Day is unlike those that we've done in the past. With how crazy everything's been this year, I think it's nice that we're finding new ways to do things we enjoy. And with the people we enjoy too. Whether we're talking about sports or event coverages, these are large productions. We'd like to recognize the following individuals who dedicated their time to these productions throughout the year. When you hear your name, please stand up and a member of our prize team will come to you. Jolie Atwood, in addition to helping crew sports and special events, Jolie co-hosted our coverage of Tr October 2020. Anthony Matos and Kevin Carnell as our regular Red Devil announcers. <laughs> Alan Foulds and Bill Byer, who hosted and moderated our town election coverage. <laughs> Evan McNamee and Chris Rose, who both started volunteering with us last year and became regular crew members for multiple productions. And behind the camera for many games and events, Jack Carey, Ethan Dory, Liz Gillespie, Nigel Carantuni, Dylan Lynch, Luke Marcasoli, Jordan Marino, Colleen Moore, Nick Carwin, Barry Siddiqui, and Dominic, Dominic Squilini. We'd also like to give a special thank you to John Middleton Cox and John Porter for lending their technical expertise to our coverage of last year's town meetings, including the big one on Varsity Field last June, and also for helping with the technical preparations for tonight's ceremony, and Nicole Doherty and Lindsay Shepard for BHS Athletics for stepping behind the camera for a few games. And a special thank you to BHS Athletic Director Sean Hart for all of his work in coordinating coverage in such an unprecedented and unpredictable season. Thank you all, and roll devils. Now I'd like to welcome Roger Riggs to the stage. Now we'd like to acknowledge our video Voyager after school program. As everything went virtual this year, production coordinator John Vias did not let that stop the creativity of the video Voyagers. He stepped up to the plate and took the program completely virtual with great success. Via Zoom, the Video Voyagers produced some fun and memorable skits. 
Let's take a look at some of the creativity from this year's virtual video voyagers. Good evening and welcome to V3 Quarantine News. I'm Kevin Peterman. I'm Jack Bacon. Hello, I am still Dylan. Wait a minute, are you telling me that we live in a society of video voyagers? I don't know what's going on. There's no one on the plane. Where is everyone? Have you ever wanted to put a stone on your shelf and do nothing with it? Well, may I suggest the new iStone. And do not forget the iStone Mini, because it, it, it's just a pebble. It's really hard to forget. It, it, it's just a pebble. What's this, a pencil? I don't need this. Man, gotta write the report on the last job. I don't have anything to write it with. Pencil? There you have it, folks. Now we have something that kills 100% of germs. Quarantine's given me a lot of extra time, so I've been doing things like going to the beach. Uh, shoot, I, I didn't think this through enough. Uh, going on walks. Never get whole wheat hot dog breads. Like, don't, like, ever, ever. I'm not even kidding. Don't get them at all. I learned a lot from this quarantine. And I also miss a lot from this quarantine, so hopefully it ends soon. Robotics has really uh, melted my brain, so I think I've gone upside. I've gone upside down. I feel like people have been closer now more than ever, and the fact that we have programs like Zoom and Google Meet are just great. Streaming live from Antarctica two days a week. That's me, New Robert. Goodbye. Every year, as part of the program, we track volunteer hours the Voyagers spend crewing BCAT productions outside of Voyagers and acknowledge with the, most hour, the Voyager with the most hours at the end of the year. This year, we have a tie. Luke Marschioli and Barid Fidiku, would you please come up to the stage to receive your gift of Schoolhouse Ice Cream? Luke, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, come on, get a second. Oh, thank you. oh, never mind, you're te teeing up something else. All right, so now for the final hours of the evening, I'd like to bring the president of the board, Linda McNamee, as well as Vice President Gretchen Carey back to the stage. Thank you, Roger. BCAT has always attracted senior vo student volunteers over the years. This year, we would like to honor a special group of graduating seniors who got their start through our Video Voyager program and have remained involved with BCAT throughout the years. They were heavily involved in our high school club, BHS TV, and consistently devoted their time volunteering for various productions. Behind the scenes, they did it all, from studio productions to sports and special events coverage, and they have been some of our most spirited on-camera talents. They have become regular fixtures at BCAT and have left a long-lasting impression on our community. We would like to honor each of you as you leave high school and head off for new adventures. Students, when I call your name, please come up to the stage. We have a student grant to award you, as well as personally embroidered hoodies to commemorate your time with BCAT. Jolie Atwood. Liz Gillespie. And Brandon Gordon. <laughs> and with these sweatshirts, you will continue to represent BCAT in the height of campus fashion as you make your way around the quad in the fall. 
All right, Jolie, come on over and give us a, a few words about what your plans are for next year. You don't get away that easily. Nope, come on over. Hello. Um, I'm going to be going to the University of Connecticut in stores, okay. um, and I will be majoring in molecular and cellular biology. And I hope to join, maybe it's like the television station thing on the campus, so I can continue to do stuff like this. Awesome. Yay. Congratulations. Thank you. That was my alma mater, just saying, and that was actually what I did too. So yeah, okay. <laughs> Liz Gillespie, a few words, please. I believe Phil mentioned it earlier, but I will be going to the University of California, Davis, and I will be majoring in biomedical engineering with a possible minor in film. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. There you go. No Brandon, come on over. What are you up to next fall? All right, uh, look at all these people. I am going to be going to Mass Art this coming Ooh. summer uh, for illustration. I absolutely love drawing, and hopefully, by going to college for it, I'll be good at it too. <laughs> um, for, you know, BCAT, if, hey, if they ask me to do stuff, I'll do stuff, and I'll probably do stuff if they don't. <laughs> they cannot get rid of me that easily. They have tried multiple times. <laughs> They've all failed. <laughs> Good luck to each of you, and we hope you continue to be part of the BCAT family. Absolutely be sure to stop in on us, all right? Yeah. Don't be a stranger. Thank you so much for everything. And now, it is my honor to present the last award of the evening, the Volunteer of the Year Award. Every year, we like to recognize a volunteer that goes above and beyond with their time and talent. This volunteer began with us as a video voyager in middle school, and then BHS TV in high school, while also annually participating in BCAT's summer sessions. She was often seen, ho seen hosting segments on the monthly variety show, Speak of the Devils, and was a recurring host of BHS's weekly morning announcement program, The Devil's Sunrise. She has been our B News sports anchor since 2019, I hear her giggle, <laughs> as well as the host of B News Sports Hub since it began that same year. Last year, she was awarded Excellence in Studio Talent for her work on Sports Hub. She has also produced special features on Burlington Relay for Life and the BHS Lip, Lip Sync Battle, the latter of which earned her the Excellence in Student Reporting Award in 2019. She has been a regular crew member on productions such as Concerts on the Common, Something to Talk About, Chris Flaherty's Lip Dubs, BHS Sports, and countless other productions. Earlier this year, she produced a documentary called A Cinematic Masterpiece here at BCAT for her senior project. This spring, she was our senior intern, where she spent roughly 25 to 30 hours weekly with us. During that time, she was able to learn the daily operations at BCAT including all the aspects that go into producing our weekly sports segment for B News. She also produced the coverage of the BHS Outdoor Spring Concerts and helped with our sports coverage. She is currently producing a documentary on BHS athletics operation during the pandemic, so stay tuned for BCAT for that. Needless to say, she's done it all. Her enthusiasm for video production is evident through her work and she's always ready to lend a hand. She's been a household name here, and it's been a pleasure having her around BCAT. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our Volunteer of the Year Award to Liz Gillespie. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to miss you. Miss you too. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, a few okay. more words. Uh, like, I'll, did you change your mind about your major? No. I'm going in for something now, different now. <laughs> I'm staying here. Um, I'll try to, I'll say something short so that I don't cry. Um, 
I, fun fact, I cried yesterday because my final episode of Sports Hub was yesterday. And my final sports report was yesterday as well. And it's weird to say that my time here is wrapping up because it doesn't feel like it is. It feels like I'm getting more involved every day. And to know that I'm moving soon is wrong, but I will always be back. And thank you so much to everyone that I've met along the way. Thank you to my parents for supporting me for everything. Thank you, Linda, for having me on your show every week. God, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> thank you to Chris for always being there. Thank you, Robert, for working with sports with me. Thank you, John, for being there as well. Thank you to everyone at BCAT. Thank you, Jen. It's been an honor to be there. And <laughs> I forgot you get a trophy. Oh, my God. <laughs> thank you. It'll look great in the dorm room. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone. I am honored. <laughs> How did I forget the trophy? Jeez. I'm going to miss her. Well, that concludes our ceremony. Thank you again to all of the volunteers mentioned tonight and to all of our BCAT volunteers. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. It's been great to see everyone together tonight. And as the world starts to reopen, we hope to see all of the connecting and creating again in the coming months. So with that, fellow board members, can I have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Is there a second? All in favor? Motion passed. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.